question one. If A is an Empyrean matrix and C is a row echelon matrix, which is row equivalent to A, which means C is obtained from A by applying the row operations, then number of non-zero rows of C is equal to row rank of A. Right? Let's recall these two results first. If A is an M by N matrix such that B is obtained from A by applying the row operations, then there exists a non-singular matrix Q such that A Q is equal to B. This B which is obtained from A is equal to A multiplied with Q. That is the non-singular matrix. Second result, row space of P A is equal to row space of A if P is non-singular. These two results we have already proved in the previous contents. Please check these over there. Now let's start with the proof. Now since it is given to us that C is a row equivalent matrix which is row equivalent to A. It is row equivalent to A means by applying the row operations this C matrix is obtained. So by the result, by the first result, therefore there exists a non-singular matrix P such that this C is equal to P multiplied with A. Thus, row space of C is equal to row space of P A. And because P is a non-singular matrix, so by the second result, this is further equal to row space of A. Row space of P A is equal to row space of A. This is the second result. Reason as P is non-singular. Okay, so this implies row space of C is equal to row space of A, which means the dimension of C is equal to the dimension of A, right? And this implies dimension of C is nothing but the row rank of C is equal to the row rank of A. We have to show that row rank of A is equal to the number of non-zero rows of C, right? Okay. Suppose that C consists of R non-zero rows, right? Now, since C is in the row equivalent form with R non-zero rows, right? So, therefore, first R rows of C spans row space of C, right? This I have explained in details in the previous content, right? So, just this is the same proof. And now from here, same proof is continuing. So, because... C is in row equivalent form with R non-zero rows. So therefore, let's say R1, these rows are R1, R2, R3 up to RR. These spans row space of C. Now to prove that the row rank of C is equal to the number of the rows, the number of the non-zero rows, which are R in number. That means we will prove that row rank of C is equal to R. Right? Now for that, I need to prove that these number of rows forms the basis for RC. Right? So for basis, I need to prove two things. One is that these rows spans the row space of C, which we have already written over here. And second thing is these rows are linearly independent. Right? Which we will going to prove. So when these two conditions satisfies, we say that all these rows are, these forms the basis for row space of C. So required to prove R1, R2, R3 up to RR are linearly dependent. And let C be written as, the matrix C is written as Cij and let's say this is M by N matrix and let L1 strictly less than L2, strictly less than L3, up to LR. These are the column indices of the leading entries of the non-zero rows. Then, this CILK is defined as, this is equal to 1 for I equal to K, and this is equal to 0 for I not equal to K, which is also denoted as Ronecker symbol, that is delta IK. This is the Ronecker symbol. Now let, let's write R1, R2, R3 up to RR be the linear combinations 
having the uh, scalars as alpha 1, alpha 2 up to alpha r. So alpha 1, r1, plus alpha 2, r2, plus alpha 3, r3, so on, plus alpha r, r, r. This is equal to 0. Then writing this in the summation form, i going from 1 to r, and this is alpha i, r, i equal to 0. And because r, i is what? This is the i -th row, having the elements as Yes, C, I -th row first column, C, I -th row second column, up to C, I -th row nth column because C is a matrix of M by N form. Number of rows M and number of columns N. Okay, so let me write this further as summation I going from 1 to R. This is alpha I and writing R I to be as C, I, J equal to 0. Let's define this j. j is for from 1, 2, 3 up to n because number of columns are n. Then again, the summation i going from 1 to r, alpha i, and writing c i j to be as c i l k because for the column indices, I'm defining this. So these holds for j equal to l1, l2 up to l r right and this k is also mentioned to be as k is from 1 to r and then this summation i going from 1 to r alpha i the c i l k can be written as as a runecker symbol that is delta i k equal to 0 where k is from 1 to r right now delta i k the value for delta i k is equal to 1 for i equal to k. So delta i k is non-zero for i is equal to k. That means these alphas should be 0 for i equal to k. So writing here alpha k because for i equal to k. So alpha k is equal to 0 for k equal to 1, 2 up to r which means this alpha 1 is equal to alpha 2 is equal to alpha 3. K is going from 1 to R. So up to alpha R equal to 0. Now all these alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 up to alpha R are equal to 0. Where we have written the linear combinations of R1, R2, R3, R, R here. Now when all these uh, scalars are 0 for this linear combinations of R1, R2, R3 up to R, R, then this is the condition for the linearly independent elements, right? So R1, R2, R3 up to R, R, these are the linearly independent. So therefore, R1, R2, R3, R, R are linearly independent. Thus, now because both the two conditions, one, that these non-zero rows spans row space of C and also these non-zero rows are the linearly independent rows, right? So, these rows R1, R2, R3 now forms the basis for row space of C. So, therefore, the dimension of row space of C is equal to now R. What is the dimension of RC? It is the number of the bases present for RC, right? And these number of bases are R in number. So the dimension of RC is equal to R. And dimension of RC is rho rank of C. This is equal to R. And from here, if I mark this as star, that is rho rank of C is equal to rho rank of A. So from the star, we say that rho rank of A is equal to rho rank of c which is equal to we have just proved that this is equal to r so this implies rho rank of a is equal to r which is the number of non-zero rows of c hence the number of non-zero rows of c is equal to rho rank of a hence proved thank you